Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. We have a lot to get to. I'm Billy Ambody, back from a about 20-hour drive back from Florida to Dallas. So just got home uh, late last night, now able to get you guys a podcast. We were caught up in all the cancellations around the country, so um, happy to be back in front of the podcasting uh, and able to talk with all of you guys about the big news that came on Christmas Day with SMU landing a commitment from the transfer portal in Texas A&M running back LJ Johnson. We'll talk about that. We'll discuss some of the new transfer offers to go out, what to expect next uh, with this transfer portal window that is ongoing. Uh, We'll record this podcast today. And then I promise you guys by the end of the week, uh, we will have out our latest mailbag edition of the podcast uh, to share with you guys as well. So let's jump right in really. Uh, with the news that LJ Johnson decided to take his talents to Dallas. The Houston area native was a former four-star prospect um, coming out of high school, out of Cy Fair. Uh, He was a top 100 prospect, the number five running back nationally in the 2021 recruiting cycle. If you're keeping track at home, LJ Johnson joining SMU gives SMU the top two running backs from the 2021 class on the roster from the state of Texas, uh, that is, with Kamar Wheaton and L.J. Johnson. They were the top two backs in Texas. Um, look, L.J. Johnson played in four games, redshirted in 2021, and then this past season was kind of still in that backup role. Just too many mouths to feed, from my understanding, in College Station. He's a bigger guy. He's not one of those explosive players like Devin uh, Achien, uh, at least that's how I pronounce his name, uh, at uh, Texas A&M. He's kind of a bigger body. If you're looking at it from the transfer portal perspective with SMU, you get Jalen Knighton, kind of your lightning guy. And now you have LJ Johnson, who brings kind of more of a bruising style of running to the Mustangs. In 2022, 10 carries, 39 yards, uh, and two touchdowns. Uh, that's coming off of 21 carries for 76 yards in four games as a true freshman. He'll have three years of eligibility remaining. And this was big. And uh, for those of you who aren't subscribers to OnThePonyExpress.com, jump on board today. I appreciate you guys who have jumped on board. We had over 50 subscribers in the month of December with about 40 of them coming um, really in the last week and a half or so. So Merry Christmas to all you guys who uh, now have a new present under the tree, which is an On The Pony Express subscription. Um, appreciate you guys jumping on board. Let's let's go back to this. LJ Johnson uh took an official visit to SMU. SMU was the perceived leader heading into the portal window where uh, he was going to, you know, you know, look around and find a new destination. And then you saw Oklahoma and UCLA and even Baylor in a, in a little bit of a sense, uh, turn up the heat on him. And that's when in a, in a way you kind of look at recruiting overall, whether it's high school transfer, Juco time kind of kills all deals. If you're feeling good, um, SMU, I mean, I look back on some of them. As time goes on, it does kill deals in a lot of ways. Um, And that goes for any school. But one, I I will recall briefly, that ended up working out for SMU was Rasheed Rice. He uh, took a while to make that formal announcement, uh, and he ended up jumping on board with SMU, and the rest is history. But LJ Johnson decided to kind of wait. Uh, He did, from what I was told leading up to the announcement, commit to SMU um, You know, a few days before Christmas. And uh, this is a big pickup. This is really, really big. I spoke with offense coordinator Casey Woods um, about this on my drive home. That's kind of a perk for subscribers. We have a ton of content coming from my chat with Casey Woods, as well as defensive coordinator Scott Simon. So looking forward to sharing that with you guys. Um, But, you know, this is one of those deals where you had the lightning uh, in Jalen Knighton, um, Rooster, joining the fold. And now you have LJ Johnson, who's a little bit of that thunder guy. But what it also does is it kind of balances out the running back room a little bit more from a scholarship perspective. Now you've you have this room that is set for years and years uh, with kind of Tyler Levine, uh, Jalen Knight and being those veteran guys. You know, who knows if Trey Siggers comes back? You have Velton Gardner, who's going to, I believe, have one more season. He might have two, um, but I'm kind of doing that one off the top of my head. Um, But now you have two younger backs in Kamar Wheaton uh, and LJ Johnson. And that's not counting Brandon Epton. Uh, and um, uh, Monte Dawson kind of in that room. I know they really haven't emerged. I 
I think at this point you got to consider those guys um, reserve players uh, as well. You know, they just haven't done anything. Uh, Brandon Epton was kind of a key special teamer. We'll see if, you know, maybe those guys look for new places. But now you have some younger running backs uh, in the room that can really solidify things for years to come. You know, they lost TJ McDaniel to the portal. But LJ Johnson and Jalen Knighton, I mean, you're not, you know, you can land a better running back out of the portal, um, you know, in just a one, you know, player. There were better running backs, but in terms of a tandem, that's about as good as it's going to get nationally. So kudos to SMU. Uh, Keenan Hall did a great job. The whole staff uh, really did a nice job on LJ Johnson here um, to get him on board. Uh, this is one that we just told our subscribers, hey, patience. There were going to be some Christmas presents. Uh, there was only one, but there are still uh, some players out there that um, if you're a subscriber, you know that SMU is still feeling good about uh, on that front. So be on the lookout uh, for how those guys unfold as well. So Big deal to get LJ Johnson on campus. He'll be somebody that comes in January. Pretty much all of these players that have committed and signed with SMU, from what I hear, will be on campus in January. So that is big. So let's reset it now that they've got LJ Johnson on board. Uh, they added defensive linemen Elijah Roberts and Jordan Miller from Miami, uh, two players that add plenty of size to the defensive line. They added linebacker. Uh, Ahmad Walker from Liberty, somebody who's going to plug in and be that starter, honestly, right away um, at, for this SMU defense, probably at the mic position. Then you look at the secondary hall, Jonathan McGill out of Stanford, who can play nickel, he can play free safety. You had Charles Woods, the corner out of West Virginia, and you also add Kale Sanders, CJ, uh, from Fresno State, a two-year starter uh, for Fresno, Fresno State, and I'm hearing that he's going to bring some position versatility. Somebody who's got some size, um, you know, to kind of be versatile. Uh, he's not really locked into necessarily just corner. They could potentially move him around. And then you have Charles Woods, uh, who's going to be kind of an outside corner that they really expect, if he can stay healthy, to lock it down. So you add those guys on the defensive side of the ball, and then they added LJ Johnson and Jalen Knight at running back. Um, and they also added Hyron White, the former DeSoto standout, uh, who comes over for his final year at SMU uh, to play really that right tackle spot that Owen Condon uh, vacated. Uh, Owen Condon is not going to continue playing college football. He's going to shut it down. I'm hearing the same about Joe Bissinger. Um, so SMU does have some room uh, at offensive line for two new starters uh, with those two guys out the door. Hyron White is healthy is pretty much ready to go. He'll be here in January from what I hear and able to uh, you know, start getting to work with SMU and uh, learning that position. They also added Keyshawn Smith, the wide receiver from Miami, uh, to kind of complete that transfer portal haul during the early signing period. So uh, SMU now has 10 transfers on board to go along with their 15 signees in this class. We kind of ran down some of that um, with the uh, podcast that we dropped after the early signing period, kind of that brief rundown right before Christmas for you guys. Uh, but one thing I'll say is they're going to be, I believe, four, and, and I haven't gotten this double, triple confirmed yet, but the four early enrollees for SMU are going to be Alex Kilgore, the, the linebacker out of Katie Paytow, um, who they really have high hopes for. They think he's going to be really special and somebody that, honestly could end up breaking through to be a starter as a true freshman. That's how high they are on him. They're also going to have Braden Flowers, uh, the defensive lineman from San Antonio Central Catholic, come over. He played just about everything uh, for Central Catholic, running back, tight end, uh, defensive end, defensive line. Uh, he was originally a linebacker. He's now up to about 260 pounds. So he's going to factor in early on, potentially, at defensive end. But really long term, you look at him as somebody who can play that three technique for SMU. And then on the offensive side, uh, Lonnie Johnson, uh, who who had a, a, a collarbone, a broken collarbone uh, that ended his senior season out of Fort Worth, Timber Creek, that they're really excited about. He's going to play tight end for SMU, but started off his senior season uh, with four touchdowns, I believe, at running back uh, for Timber Creek over there in Fort Worth. Uh, so again, somebody that uh, just kind of flew under the radar, Got hurt, I believe, about halfway through, maybe even a little bit earlier than that, his senior season, uh, and he's going to enroll early. And then they'll have Jackson Lavender, uh, the highly productive Lucas Love Lovejoy wideout 
uh, join the fold in January. So I believe that's the four. Could be off, could be you know missing one. Um, but from my conversations, that's who I've heard uh, is heading in for the early um, you know uh, enrollee status in January to join the Mustangs. Um, and Jackson will you know be somebody that in the slot will have an even bigger opportunity to contribute right away uh, because he can return kicks and punts. Uh, he also, you know, just comes into a slot position that saw Roger Daniels emerge late. Uh, Dylan Gopney got hurt um, and will need some time to recover. Jake Bailey's coming back from injury. And Randy Reese, um, the Dallas South Oak Cliff uh, standout, tours ACL. So you got to consider him as somebody who's going to redshirt his first year at SMU. I think now when you look at what's next for SMU, and we've seen this and we're going to run down a couple of new offers that went out in the transfer portal um, defense and tight end. Um, that continues to be the name of the game for the staff. I feel like addressing the defensive side of the ball, you added one linebacker and a mod Walker. And shortly really after, I believe we record, we recorded the podcast, um, Appalachian state linebacker, Keyshawn Brown, 6'2", 215 pounder added an offer from SMU. Um, he'll have, um, just one year of eligibility remaining, uh, from my count. He played in 2019, uh, eight games, for the Mountaineers, uh, red shirted in that 2020 COVID season. So he does have a red shirt available, but with a veteran player like this who played 18 games over the last two seasons, you've got to expect him to use that one year remaining of eligibility instead of being a, um, a two, two years to play one season guy. Last year for App State, he played in 11 games, notched 39 tackles, five and a half, went for loss, three sacks. Um, had two forced fumbles and a pass breakup on the season. So SMU still looking to add another linebacker to the mix. If they can't do that, they're going to have to rely on Alex Kilgore. But more importantly, Jaquandis Burns and Cam Farrar are going to have to take steps forward. It wouldn't shock me if they toy around with some different players at um, the linebacker position, maybe move some guys around. Uh, we saw that with Kiki Burns get some uh, burn, so to speak, here and there. Um, as a positional guy this past season, but um, he's also been injured a lot. Who knows kind of where he stands in that rotation, but um, they'll have Alex Kilgore. They'll also have Brandon Miazano, and um, we'll have more from Scott Simons on him on the board. But just to share, um, you know, one thing with Brandon is he played quarterback. He he, he played um, uh, kind of a little, little tight end uh, all over the place, really, uh, for – Frisco um, and Scott Simon said they were, you know, when you, when you recruit a player like that, who plays on the offensive side of the ball, you wonder, okay, can they really, you know, deal with the physicality and do they want to play linebacker? And they saw him go out there in his spring game and, and just knock the stew out of people and, and really um, show some signs of physicality. Uh, the one game of Brandon's I saw um, he was nasty. And actually it was a game where, um, I think it was Frisco and Frisco Centennial uh, ended up kind of getting in a little mini brawl uh, and he was ejected. So he's got some dog uh, in him, so to speak. Uh, and he'll take some, I, I bet you he'll take some time to just kind of develop physically. Um, he's coming off an injury from what I understand now. So uh, he'll be somebody that enrolls in the summer. will get into the weight room. Uh, and I do think he'll be somebody that probably ends up uh, in the two deep. Because um, if you look at it, you've got a mod walker. Let's say they add another transfer that they expect to, you know, play right away. Uh, then you've got Jaquandis Burns. We'll see if Cam Farrar can take that next step. He saw some snaps uh, at various points and showed some flashes during the year. And then you have Alex Kilgore and Brandon Maizano. So for them, you know, in the middle, they only have to kind of take one step up to break into that too deep. Um, so they're they're kind of relying right now on those two guys to really play a good bit of football. I bet you they're both going to be key special teamers for SMU and we'll see what else the transfer portal yields on the linebacker front. So um, Keyshawn Brown was their latest offer at linebacker. Then you get into the secondary where they're continuing uh, to address. Here are some of the targets that are now out there for SMU still. Um, when you look at things, uh, Kobe Miner, uh, the safety from Texas Tech, added an offer um, just in the last week or so. And so SMU is now in the mix for him. Uh, but I will say, um, I think he's somebody that's going to be highly contested for. Uh, they all also uh, offered Amir Ren, Ren, Renwick, sorry, 
uh, who's teammates with Bishop Fitzgerald at Coffeyville um, uh, Community College. So he's somebody that can now play uh, the safety position uh, that is in the mix. They're still after Bishop Fitzgerald. I'm still hearing they're in the mix there. Um, but again, one of those players that if, took an official visit and now you got to look at it and say, okay, does time kill deals? Um, and, you know, we'll kind of see. Uh, but he started to blow up as well. SMU did offer Chris Meganson from Liberty, uh, somebody that has uh, got some familiarity with the SMU defensive staff. Uh, and he could provide a kind of a one-year stopgap uh, at corner as well. And now you kind of see, and I, if I forgot any, I, I apologize. One might, one, one or two more might come to me as we're recording this. Um, but then you look at the newest offer in the secondary for SMU, Jason Maitre. And I'm only saying it that way because it's spelled M-A-T, M-A-I-T-R-E. Uh, so it's Maitre without the D. Um, so that is how I'm going to pronounce his name until I'm told otherwise. Um, but Jason Maitre. Uh, gets an offer. He's, an, he's a Florida native who was actually committed for a cup of coffee uh, the last few days to Liberty. I'm hearing some things coming out of Liberty that maybe uh, some staff change is coming. So he wanted to go ahead and reopen things, which he did last night. Um, and that is, um, I guess, what's today? Wednesday. Uh, it is Tuesday that it would be Tuesday that he reopened things. Um, 5'10", 188 pounds, safety. Played a lot of football over the last few years. Also played some corner. Uh, redshirted as a freshman in 2018. Uh, played in 11 games in 2019 with six starts. Played in, in 2020, uh, 11 games with six starts at corner. And then switched over to safety as a redshirt junior in 2021. Uh, started seven games uh, that he played in that season. This past year in 2022, played in 12 games. Uh, he, he added 42 tackles, two tackles for loss, an interception, and a sack, as well as six pass breakups. So a pretty active player. That was a um, not tied a career high for him in pass breakups, which came in 2019 when he was playing corner. So pretty active player uh, from Boston College that SMU offered. So with those offers out, um, now you've got to look at it and say, okay, defensive line is always a position they're going to try to address. Edge rusher, defensive tackle. I still think they're after some more. Kevin, Kevin Allen, who SMU signed out of the high school ranks, is somebody that they've got to, you know, certainly be, um, you know, excited about. He's big enough to play early. Um, out of the three defensive linemen that they signed um, with Damian Wimberly, Braden Flowers, uh, and um, Kevin Allen, Kevin Allen's probably the most ready to play physically um, because Damian Wimberly's kind of a tweener right now, kind of that Devere Levelston size. Um, and they added, you know, Elijah Roberts at that edge spot um, where Devere plays. So there's some depth there. Then you add um, Braden Flowers, kind of the same situation there. Both are inside guys long term. But Kevin Allen has that size to kind of play right away. Uber productive as a senior at, at Everman. Was a Landry Award finalist. Um, racked up over 200 tackles over his last two years of high school football. Um, so, again, somebody that you really like um, from a projectable standpoint. Uh, with SMU in their defense, he's somebody that can contribute right away. But still, you've got Elijah Chapman and Jordan Miller now in the middle. Um, maybe Elijah Chapman maybe moves off that nose a little bit more with uh, Jordan Miller coming in. He's more of a bigger body. That will allow some some snaps behind those two spots to open up. You bring Steph right back. Can he take that next step and stay healthy? Um, they have Dylan Frazier, who kind of broke through as a rotational guy. Um, or somebody who dressed uh, late in the season due to injury. They still have Braylon Jackson. They still have Stone Eby kind of rolling around there. So um, lots of opportunity, you know, for for the interior defensive linemen at SMU to kind of emerge. So I still think they'll go after another transfer defensive lineman. Um, and then in the secondary, you've got to see SMU uh, still targeting, you know, safeties, corners. Jalen Davis Robinson is still uncommitted. So he's somebody we're watching as well for SMU, about to post some notes on the site about, um, you know, kind of just this whole transfer portal uh, target list and kind of where SMU's at with it. And so be sure to hit that subscribe button to ontheponyexpress.com and check that out. Uh, we'll have those notes posted for you guys uh, by the end of the day, um, without a doubt. Uh, then you look at tight end. Tight end is a position where Jake Roberts added an offer from North Texas or 
at an offer from SMU. He was at North Texas. He was highly productive this past season. He's looking for a new home now with the coaching change. And I still think he's going to be somebody that adds some more opportunities because the tight end position in the transfer portal is so thin. SMU signed Lonnie Johnson. They signed Trip Reardon. Two very different players that will add competition and depth into that room, I think, right away. Um, Lonnie gets his recovery in order, starts getting to work in the weight room and in the offense offense in the spring. That'll help him. And then Trip, 6'5", 250 pounds, um, really moved well. And SMU went ahead and offered him uh, in the summer after a private workout. And that's what's, what kind of led to his commitment. Um, and, and a guy that held a lot of you know power five offers, um, especially early in his recruitment. So tight end room still needs some reworking. That's why they offered Jake Roberts. We'll kind of continue to track that position. And then the wide receiver room, I feel like they got to add one more, um, especially an outside guy. You know, Keytron Jackson signed with Baylor. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. That was a surprise. Um, but that really was kind of the lone surprise, I would say. Um, but at a position where they need to add another outside receiver. there are, There's a ton of speed. Um, and Casey Woods talked about that with me, uh, just saying how, you know, SMU is always going to target and look for guys that can take the top off the defense. You bring back Jake Bailey, Jordan Curley, um, you add Keyshawn Smith, you add Dylan Goffney. Um, they've got some guys coming up and, and you know, things like that that can kind of emerge. Roger Daniels showed some good things uh, late this season that, you know, has to have them excited uh, for next year with his, um, you know, potential. So the wide receiver room, I feel like just needs one more. And then that would kind of be it. So you look for all these best available defensive players to continue to stockpile because they need that help. Um, and that's probably the goal for SMU. That's the big goal. Tight end and continuing to stockpile defensive talent. Uh, that is what I'm watching for as SMU moves into this next transfer portal run. Here's what's next. The transfer portal window closes, and we've talked about this, on January 18th. That means players can enter um, up until January 18th and then be recruited throughout the spring. So we'll kind of watch that, see if there's some players that secure their spots on scholarship for the spring and then end up um, you know, doing transfer portal recruitments. And I still think for SMU, there are some players that we could see that happen. Um, you know, TJ McDaniel is going to graduate in the spring. He was allowed to enter the portal and then he'll um, graduate. A um, couple others that are that are kind of escaping me right now. Um, but that's kind of what I expect to happen. I don't think we'll see a ton of attrition from SMU, but kind of some guys that you would kind of naturally expect to, to enter. It wouldn't shock me if they did that. What's next is um, there's another transfer portal window of visits. And they both come, I believe, the second through the sixth. And then right after... Um, and then the next weekend. Um, and the six marks the start of the coaches convention. That happens uh, in Charlotte this year. Um, so the college coaches will all be, for the most part, at that, um, doing networking, doing all the things. Um, I wish I could go. It's an absolute blast to be there. Um, and, and it's a great time to uh, build relationships and uh, see some old friends as well. Uh, but then they'll have another visit weekend, I believe, after that. Um, could be wrong kind of on the timing, but I know there's one that comes right after the new year. So these coaches got some time off for Christmas, but they're right back at it with this transfer portal recruiting. Um, and I think we'll see some more players come through SMU. Um, we talked about the defensive side. We talked about Jake Roberts. Quick note, um, Drake Metcalf and P.J. Williams, the Stanford interior offensive lineman and the Texas A&M uh, offensive tackle who could play some interior both still out there, both still SMU targets. Um, so keep an eye on those guys as well as we're going into this next wave. We'll see if they take some more visits. Um, we're tracking that. Uh, but yes, definitely check out on theponyexpress.com uh, for more notes across the board on the transfer front, as well as our interviews with Scott Simons and Casey Woods breaking down their signing class halls, both high school and transfer uh, additions. So that's great. Um, quick note on our basketball coverage, uh, just had to table it. Um, team wasn't doing well. SMU was doing very, very well in the transfer portal and in high school recruiting as well. We had a lot to cover. We had our hands full. In the new year, SMU kicks it off with a New Year's Day um, battle uh, in Moody Coliseum. But first, look, SMU was able to uh, go to the Diamond Head Classic in Hawaii 
and win two out of three. A heartbreaking loss uh, in the championship game uh, on uh, Christmas Day uh, to Hawaii and a game that I got to catch probably the last minute or so of. I haven't watched the whole thing. I do want to uh, do that. Um, but just kind of just didn't execute. Um, and, and sometimes basketball games come down to the very end. They did that in both of their uh, previous games, Iona and Utah State, able to close it out against Hawaii. They didn't heck of a shot to win the game um, for the home team uh, to win 58-57. Would have been a really, really nice just kind of feather in the cap to end their time in Hawaii. But that kind of after two weeks off, that was a nice showing. That maybe builds some confidence going into January 1st when SMU hosts Tulsa at 2 p.m. Central on ESPNU inside Moody Coliseum to kick off league play. They'll get back into it. And then they head right to Houston on January 5th on that Thursday night uh, to face the Cougars on ESPN2. Um, so a lot of action with SMU stepping into league play. We will have full coverage of that. We'll be back on the basketball train with Rob Lanier and co. Uh, Zurich Phelps did win uh, AAC Player of the Week honors. I saw for his performance. Uh, look, he puts a lot on his shoulders. There are times that you obviously want to look at him and say, hey, take a chill pill. But he's playing at a high level. Um, from what I've been able to see in bits and pieces, I know there's, um, a, you know, hero ball this, hero ball that. Um, but right now they're needing him to play at a really high level. And so for him to get that recognition, um, you, you honestly like to see that going into league play. So um, we'll get into basketball. We'll get into that a lot more as we get into uh, the league play uh, for SMU the last season with Houston UCF uh, and Cincinnati in the AAC. Um, low expectations entering league play for the Mustangs. They currently sit uh, at five and eight overall. Um, they've won two of their last three, though. Uh, and look, the road games are going to probably be what kind of dictate how this team goes in league play. They're over three in their away games this season um, with various levels of, of you know, success. I know they haven't won one, but we saw them open with, with a nice effort uh, against Dayton on the road. But then you saw uh, them take a step back against AM. and uh, And I believe um, uh, the TCU game does classify as a home game for um, the Horn Frogs. SMU has uh, them at 0-3, so I assume that's the lone one uh, that uh, sticks out as a road test. They lost that one to TCU. Showed a little bit, you know, more, um, you know, competitiveness uh, in that game. But look, it, it's not been a great start for Rob Lanier. They need to get off to a great start against Tulsa on Sunday at 2 p.m. So, like I said, we will jump more into basketball coverage now that the new year is here. Kind of able to balance it a little bit more that high school football season's over as well as the recruiting. Uh, class for 2023 is done. We'll start to look ahead to 2024 uh, with SMU uh, starting to turn its attention to the high school ranks in that class. Just one note to pass along on 2024. Um, I feel like SMU is going to be a little bit more selective in this class, um, you know, from a standpoint of they don't necessarily need to to reach. The roster is now stabilized. They have Tyler Aronson, uh, a highly rated, highly thought of quarterback out of Florida, committed to the 2024 class. He's a great building block. He's very committed to SMU. Um, and I think now you got to look at this high school class and say, okay, probably got to add running back. You always want to add wide receiver, continue to rebuild the tight end room. Offensive line is always, they'll they'll take guys at just about every position. Um, but this roster, I think, is has really been remade. And if they land some of these defensive back targets, that means you can even be more selective. Uh, in the secondary for the class of 2024. So with that, guys, want to wrap up this edition of the podcast. Like I said, mailbag coming later this week. We'll get to it. Lots to discuss on uh, the 2024 season for SMU or the 2023 season for SMU, kind of looking ahead to what's next for the Mustangs. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed kind of this reset edition of the podcast, where things stand with the transfer portal recruiting for the Mustangs uh, now that LJ Johnson is on board. So please hit that subscribe button to ontheponyexpress.com. Also hit it for our YouTube channel. We passed 400 subscribers for the YouTube channel. So thank you guys. We got to get to a thousand um, so we can start you know, selling some ads on this thing. But hey, uh, baby steps and a, a big uh, marker with that 400 uh, subscribers now 
at OnThePonyExpress.com's YouTube channel. So thank you guys for subscribing across the board. We appreciate you guys. I'm excited to also say that we'll be having probably a post-signing day, national signing day edition of the On The Pony Express subscriber meetup. Uh, so we'll we'll find something to do, uh, get together, talk about the classes, talk about you know what's next for SMU. We'll have a lot more basketball to discuss then as well. So look for more details on that. Appreciate all you guys who listen and, and subscribe and do all those things for us. We will catch you guys later in the week with another edition of the podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and hope you guys had a merry, merry Christmas. Uh, and if anyone has uh, had some travel woes like I did, hope you get home safe. Thanks for listening.